Today I wanted to talk about the trends in filmmaking. I'm going to NAB in a couple of weeks. It's been canceled the last two years, so it will be exciting to see new tech and new firms and new entrances. It is always great to see the cutting edge as yet unreleased products in the filmmaking distribution video space. But I wanted to make this video before I go to talk about generally where I see things heading in 2022 and beyond and what sort of technologies are changing the way films are made, post-produced and distributed. The first thing I'm interested in is dirty technology. Now I don't mean adult entertainment, I mean growing trend in uh, lenses and other imaging technology that seeks to add some imperfection and um, grunginess uh, to the frame. Greg Frazier, who won this year's Oscar, really encapsulates this trend by using detuned and rehoused and degraded lenses to give a sharp image at the center of the frame that then falls off to sort of almost looks like a defective lens on the outside. But this was intentional. For years, camera and lens manufacturers have been chasing this cleaner, sharper, more pristine image. And while some people really love that, Emmanuel Lebesky for one, other people find it too aesthetically perfect. And so there has been this trend to detune lenses, to uh, use multiple filters in front of the lens, to even add grunge in post. It makes the image that much more human, that much more unpredictable, something more organic, something that was easy to do uh, in the days of celluloid, but is becoming harder and harder to do in the digital era. I personally don't mind it. I think it has to suit the aesthetic. I don't think it's worth doing for the sake of just doing to impress other cinematographers or to, or as a technical feat. I think it has to be the right project and the right aesthetic. But when done well, uh, like in the Batman, it can look great. Another trend that has been building for a while and is sort of on the verge of becoming mainstream is the digital backlight. This was another thing that was used extensively uh, on the Batman, which is a, LCD wall that is then tuned in and calibrated with your camera movement and has a preloaded virtual environment in it so that as you move your camera around, what's displayed behind your actors also moves around. And it means you use this instead of green screen or use it instead of a set build. The facility itself is millions and millions of dollars to set up, but once it's set up, you can rent it for much cheaper than you could either building the set in real life or doing the green screen in post. It really suits things like The Mandalorian or Boba Fett where you are pushing out dozens and dozens of setups a day and have a tight delivery schedule for your post-production so you don't wanna to have to get stuck in all that green screen rotor work. I would say it is quite a few years away from being something that indie filmmakers can rent for 500 bucks a day. But I'd be interested to see what's at NAB as far as affordable solutions for this, because uh, I'm sure someone has one. The next trend is vertical video. Uh, love it or hate it, our phones are where most people consume uh, our media, and almost every project now, even feature films, have a vertical video deliverable. We're gonna cut a vertical video trailer for Devil's Fortune, believe it or not. There are a couple of major ways to get vertical video. One of them, of course, is just to send to cut the uh, existing 16.9 frame you have. Another is to turn your camera 90 degrees and shoot a different take vertically. A third is to have two cameras shooting simultaneously, one that shoots 16.9 and another one mounted on top of it that shoots 9.16. A fourth way is to shoot uh, two lens lengths wider than you normally would. So if you're shooting on a 50, you shoot on a 24, a 20 mil, then you crop in for your 16.9 and you crop vertically for your 9.16. If you're doing this, it's helpful to have multiple monitor outputs that you can send to different uh, to monitors and see what your frame is on those two different uh, displays. And you're gonna need to shoot in double your uh, delivery resolution. So if you're delivering in 2K, you'll need to shoot 4K. Delivering in 4K, you'll need to shoot 8K. Phones are replacing televisions in the way that most people consume most media. Uh, so I'm curious to see what solutions people have come up with to get around this, uh, you know, kind of difficult problem. A fifth trend uh, with manufacturers, uh, especially in lighting, is that everyone is making everything now. There used to be there was one company that did flex lights, another company that did uh, chip on board LEDs, another company that did tubes. Now, you know, 
most companies do all three of those form factors. So Aperture just released tubes and flexible panels as well as having their um, chip on board. I'm curious whether or not it is the manufacturers manufacturing all of those things or whether or not it's just the same factories manufacturing all of those things and different brands putting their labels on them. So at the, you know, Ari, Astera, um, Quasar level, the, the super premium uh, professional versions are still differentiated. But at the middle and towards the bottom, uh, almost every brand is doing everything. Small Rig, who do camera cages, just released a tripod and are getting into lights as well. Never been a better time to be a filmmaker because you suddenly have all of these options that are only a couple hundred dollars. As far as lighting, grip, monitoring, wireless video, uh, there are a lot of people um, in those spaces. And as a result, uh, it's a race to the bottom. The last thing I wanna talk about with filmmaking trends in 2022 is uh, camera convergence. What used to be differentiated categories of cameras, like stills cameras, cine cameras, mini cameras, studio cameras, are all sort of molding into one. You have the R5C that's just come out. I have just released a master class for that camera and it is an amazing piece of technology, but it, it is a professional fully featured stills camera and a professional fully featured uh, cine camera with tools like you know, video assist and false color and loading LUTs, 8K raw capable sensor, all for under $5,000. I think we're gonna see more and more of uh, these type of cameras come out um, and I'm curious to see uh, what people have on display at NAB. Check back in in a couple of weeks, uh, I have footage from what I found at NAB, what's coming down the pipeline and what to expect in 2022. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.